Shalom, shalom. Welcome, welcome, world changers. Tonight's going to be a very special night. We're getting into some very, very interesting scriptures. The history of Susanna. This is one of the hidden parts of the book of Daniel. The Apocrypha, the apocryphal parts of the book of Daniel that's found in the Septuagint. By the way, do you guys know that we have a lot of evidence that the early church and the uh, the believers uh of the church of the book of Acts, even Paul himself probably read and uh, uh, studied the Septuagint more so than the Masoretic uh, family of manuscripts as we know it today. So this passage that we're reading right now is a passage that would, would have been known by any and all of the above, the 12 disciples, Yeshua, Jesus himself, and all of the early church fathers. In fact, these passages were in the Bible for most of the history of the Bible, okay, up until the Protestant Reformation and shortly thereafter, uh, it, you know, the Protestant uh, Bible publishers decided to, uh, to print Bibles without this in. However, this is, these, uh, these portions of Scripture that we're going to be reading today is going to be one of the most important, <laughs> Wow, powerful, powerful um, portions. The history of Susanna, I will never forget it. When I read it, I'm thinking, wow, and I'm going to read it tonight. Make sure you let your Christian uh, friends and family members know, even your non-Christian friends and or family members, because what we're, talk what we're going to talk about tonight is going to be very, very interesting. Everyone should know this. The history of Susanna, the story, wonderful story as well as Bell and the Dragon. We're going to read Bell and the Dragon as well tonight. And then we're going to uh, crack open the book of Ezra, and we're going to read a few chapters from there. So looking forward to it, guys. Looking forward to it. See what we have here in the chat. We have Psalm 94 says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Psalm 94. Calamento says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Calamentos. Jordan says, Shalom all. To my surprise, James Block saw one of your videos. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, how? Uh, just wondering, how did you find that out, if you don't mind sharing? Um, and uh, how that came about. I did actually, yeah, I'll, I'll just see. Uh, how did you find out that he saw one of my videos? Anyway. Um, Let's get into the uh, the first reading. Now, before I get into this, I'm just going to read a little bit of a kind of a little overview of this. This is, uh, again, I'm reading from ebible.org, uh, the W-E-B World English Bible Translation, the um, Greek portion of Daniel. So uh, if you were to go there and you go to Daniel and in brackets, Greek, um, uh, it says here in the footnotes, the history of Susanna is translated from chapter 13 of Daniel in the Greek Septuagint. It is not found in the traditional Hebrew text of Daniel. Uh, the history of Susanna is recognized as deuterocanonical deutero scripture. In other words, deuterocanonical. In other words, it is actually counted as canon. Uh, as scripture, holy scripture, by the Roman Catholic Church, by the Greek Orthodox Church, and also by the Russian Orthodox Churches. I will add there are other churches as well that uh, that count this portion of scripture um, as uh, as um, as holy scripture. So. Um, yeah, so we're going to read this in just a moment. Let me just see here what we have. Jordan said. Uh, it was when I was a guest, he messaged me on Facebook. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I actually sent him um, I sent him an invitation today, Jordan. So just so you know, um, if you want to, I haven't heard back from him. It's, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago, but I haven't heard back from him. Uh, just so you know, if you want to put a little bit of a bug in his ear, if you feel led to, just to kind of contact him and say, hey, you know what? Christopher Enoch said the Ascension invitation. Um, you know, 
see what he has to say. Okay. Um, Tammy says, Shalom all. Shalom, Tammy. Good to see you. By the way, talk about invitations. Uh, Tammy, just to let you know that those in, the invitations are out on those particular uh, professors that you are referring, uh, referring me to. Uh, so I am waiting to hear back from them as well, Tammy. So thank you very much. And Shalom. Welcome, welcome. Blessings, blessings. Tammy says, hit that, hit the like button. Thank you very much, Tammy. Yes, hit the like button. Yes, let the algorithm know you guys like it. Jordan says, we'll be sure to. All right, awesome. Awesome, Jordan. Okay, uh, let's start this. The history of Susanna. As I said before, this is a, a story I will never forget. And so I'm going to read this, uh, and we're going to read Bell and the Dragon as well. Another powerful story, interesting story, unforgettable story. And so let's let's get into this. First of all, the history of Susanna. Again, this is chapter 13, the quote-unquote hidden chapter of Daniel. Verse 1, a man lived in Babylon, and his name was Joachim. Yo he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Helchias, a very fair woman, and one who, who feared the Lord. Her parents were also righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Now, Joachim was a great rich man and had a beautiful garden next to his house. The Jews used to come to him because he was more honorable than all, all others. The same year, two of the elders of the people were appointed to be judges, such as the Lord spoke of, that wickedness came from Babylon, from, from elders who were judges, uh, who were supposed, supposed to govern the people. These were often at Joachim's house. All that, all that had any lawsuits came to them. When the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk. The two elders saw her going in every day and walking, and they were inflamed with lust for her. They perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes that they might not look to heaven nor remember any uh, just judgments. And although they both were wounded with, with lust for her, yet dared not show the, the other his grief for they were ashamed to declare their lust that they desired to do with what they desired to do with her yet they desired eagerly from day to day to see her the one said to the other let's go home now for it is dinner time so when they had gone out they depart they, they parted company and turning back again they came to the same place after they had asked one another the cause, they acknowledged their lust. Then they appointed a time both together that they might find her alone. And it happened as they watched upon, excuse me, as they watched on an opportune day, she went in as, as before with only two maids. And she desired to wash herself in the garden, for it was hot. There was nobody there except the two elders who had hid themselves and watched her. Then she said to her maids, Bring me olive oil and ointment and shut the garden doors that I may wash myself. They did as she asked them and shut the garden doors and went out themselves at, at the side doors to fetch the things that, uh, that she had commanded them. They didn't see the elders because they were hidden. Now when the maids had gone out, the two elders rose up and ran to her, saying, Behold, the garden doors are shut, that no man can see us, and we are in love with you. Therefore, consent to us and lie with us. If you will not, we will testify against you that a young man was with you. Therefore, you sent your maids away. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am trapped, for if I do this thing, it is death to me. And if I, if I don't do it, I can't escape your hands. 
it is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice, and the two elders cried out against her. Then one of them ran and opened the garden doors. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. But when the elders had told their tale, the servants were greatly ashamed, for there was never support made of Susanna. It came to pass on the next day, when the people assembled to her husband, Joachim, the two elders came full of their wicked intent against Susanna to put her to death, and said before the people, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Helkiah, Joachim's wife. So they sent. And she came with her father and mother, her children, and all her kindred. Now Susanna was very a very delicate woman and beautiful to behold, these wicked men commanded her to be unveiled, for she was veiled, that they might be filled with her beauty. Therefore her friends and all who saw her wept. Then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon her head. She, weeping, looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, as we walked in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the, shut the garden doors, and sent the maids away. Then a young man who was hidden there came to, came to her and lay with her. And we, being in a corner of the, saw this wickedness and ran to them. And when we saw them together, we couldn't hold the man, for he was stronger than we, and opened the doors and, le and leaped out. But having taken this woman, we asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. We testify these things. Then the assembly believed them as those who were elders of the people and judges. So they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O everlasting God, you know the secrets and know all things before they happen. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Behold, I must die, even though I never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me. The Lord, therefore, when she was led away to be put to death, God raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth whose name was Daniel. He cried with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. Then all the people turned them toward him and, and said, What do these words that you have spoken mean? So he, standing in the midst of them, said, Are you all such fools, you sons of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of the truth, you have condemned a daughter of Israel? Return again to the, pl to the place of judgment, for these have testified falsely against her. Therefore all the people turned again in haste, and the elder said to, to him, Come, sit down among us and show it to us, seeing God has given you the honor of an elder. Then Daniel said to them, Put them far apart from each other, and I will examine them. So when they were put apart from one another, he called one of them and said, said to him, O you who have become old in wickedness, now your sins have returned which you have committed before. In pressing unjust judgment, condemning the innocent and the guilty go free. Although the Lord says you shall not kill the innocent and righteous, now then, if you saw her, tell me, under which tree did you see them companying together? He answered, under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, you have certainly lied against your own head. For even now, the angel of God has received the sentence of God and will cut you in two. So he, he put him aside and commanded to bring the other and said to him, O you seed of Canaan and not of Judah, 
Beauty has deceived you and lust has perverted your heart. Thus, you have dealt with the daughters of Israel and they for fear were intimate with you. But the daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now, therefore, tell me, under which tree did you take them being intimate together? He said, under an evergreen oak tree. Then Daniel said to him, You have certainly, you have also certainly lied against your own head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two that he might, that he may destroy you. With that, all the assembly cried out with a loud voice and blessed God, who saves those who hope in him. Then they arose against the two elders, for Daniel had convicted them of false testimony out of their own mouth. According to the law of Moses, they did to them what they maliciously intended to do to their neighbor. They put them to death. And the innocent blood was saved the same day. Therefore, Hilkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter Susanna with Joachim, her husband, and all the kindred because there was no dishonesty found in her. And from that day forth, Daniel had a great reputation in the sight of the people. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Hmm. Just before I read uh, Bell and the Dragon, just get to your um, get to the live chat here. Vinny says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Vinny. Good to see you, brother. Blessings, blessings. Byron says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Byron. Good to see you. Welcome. And Alan says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Alan. Good to see you. Welcome. Cry out to Yahweh, Yahuwah. Yes, absolutely. Amen to that. Tammy says, I feel like I just had the most intelligent conversation I've ever had, even though it was one way doctor slash professor of the week, Dr. John Dominican Crossan. Thank you. You know what? I was thinking about inviting him. It was, I was thinking about inviting him. Um, he's not easy to get a hold of that one, though. Though, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely would be an interesting uh, guest as well. And amazing, Tammy, thank you for sharing that. Wow, even though it was a one-way conversation, Professor of the Week. Thank you, thank you, Tammy. Billy says shalom, shalom, Billy. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, brother. Blessings, blessings. Okay, so. Bell and the Dragon. I'm not sure how many of you have ever read this, uh, but if you haven't, you're in for a good one. This is a good one. Another good one. Wasn't Susanna good? Wasn't Susanna good? That was an awesome, awesome story. Andrew says, God bless. Thank you very much, Andrew. God bless you more. Okay. Bell and the Dragon. Okay. Footnote. Um, all right, let's just go to the bottom of the page. It'd be easier to read up here. Bell and the dragon is translated from the fort from chapter 14 of Daniel in the Greek Septuagint. It is not found in the traditional Hebrew text. Um, Bell and the dragon is recognized as deuterocanonical scripture. In other words, it's recognized as holy word of God scripture by the Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox and Russian Orthodox churches. Again, I, I understand there are more than that. Um, that uh, that that have Bell and the Dragon in their canon, but uh, that's what they have here listed. King Astyages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus the Persian received his kingdom. Daniel lived with the king and was honored above all his friends. Now, the Babylonians had an idol called Bel, or Baal, Baal, okay? Baal, this is Baal. 
And every day, 12 great measures of fine flour, 40 sheep, and six firkins of wine were spent on it, on this idol. Six firkins would be, well, it says here, one firkin is 41 liters or 11 gallons. So that's like 66 gallons of wine every day. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Where did all that wine go? We're going to read about it in just a minute, okay? Uh, the king honored it and went daily to worship it, but Daniel worshiped his own God. The king said to him, why don't you worship Baal or Bel? He said, because I may not honor idols with my hands, but only the living God who has created the sky and the earth and has sovereignty over all flesh. Then the king said to him, don't you think that Baal is a living God? Don't you see how much he eats and drinks every day? Then Daniel laughed and said, oh, king, don't be deceived. For this is just a this is just clay inside and brass outside and never ate or drank anything. So the king was angry, you know. Hey, when you when you point to foolish, hey, you know what's been happening right recently with uh, I've been doing as some of you know I've been doing a, um, a a video series called Leveling Flat Earth. I've been talking about talking about that and. Uh, I can tell you, when you point out certain things to people that they believe that are that's not very true, and you point it out to them, many times they get angry. And you know what it is? It it's just the pride within the arrogant. It's, it's just pride. If you're if they're humble, they won't get angry. They won't get angry. They would listen and consider, at least consider. But this is what happens when you point out to these people especially laughable things, <laughs> laughably, I'm trying to pick good words here to say, laughably implausible things, <laughs> okay? Um, so the king was angry and called for his priests and said to them, if you don't tell me who this is who devours these expenses, you shall die. But if you can show me that Baal devours them, then Daniel shall die, for he has spoken blasphemy against Baal. Daniel said to the king, let it be according to your words. He's pretty confident. He knows that they're, they're just believing in stupidity, although they stubbornly do, just like I mentioned people do today so, so often, they still do. Against all odds and against all evidence, they, people are still like that. They believe in stupid things. And you know what they do? They call, it, they call the truth stupid, right? Um, verse 10, now there were 70 priests of Baal, 70 of them, besides their wives and children. The king went with Daniel into Baal's temple. So Baal's priest said, behold, we will leave, but you, O king, set out the food and mix the wine and set it out. Shut the door securely and seal it with your own signet. Now, see, this is what happens, right? A lot of times people say things and the details get missed, right? Details get missed. There's a, there's a reason why these, these, these priests said, shut the door securely and seal it with your own signet, right? Again, some good critical thinking skills would say, hey, why didn't they say, leave the door open, King, so you can see what's going on, right? Why did they say, shut it securely and lock it, basically? Why would they say that? Verse 12, when you come in the morning, if you don't find that Baal has eaten everything, we will suffer death or else Daniel, who speaks falsely against us. Oh, yeah. See? You got people, the real false ones are the ones who accuse the true, the truth as, as being false. Verse 13, they weren't concerned for under the table, they had made a secret entrance by which they entered in continually and consumed those things, right? 
It happened when they had gone out, the king set the food before Baal. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes. A mm -mm -mm, little bit of good wisdom from God there. Bring ashes, and they scattered them all over the temple in the presence of the king alone. Mm -hmm. Good one. There's some little bit of good forensics going on here. Scatter ashes on the temple floor in the presence of the king alone. Why? Right, so that they can see if something, if somebody else is actually eating by the footprints, right? If they can see if somebody else is eating it and in the presence of the king alone, so that in case it was somebody else, that they wouldn't know. Then they went out, shut the door, sealed it with the king's signet. So they played the game and so departed. Now, in the night, the priests came with their wives and children as they usually did, and ate and drank it all. Wow, I mean, they would talk about a feast every day. 66 gallons of wine and all that food. That's a party every day. In the morning, the king arose and Daniel with him. The king said, Daniel, are the seals whole? Daniel said, yes, O king, they are whole. And as soon as they had opened the door, the king looked at the table and cried with a loud voice, You are great, O Baal, and with you is no deceit at all. Why? Because the king saw that all of the food was gone, and he, he, and he, he thought, you know, uh, he thought, oh, you know, Baal, he ate all the food and drank all the wine. Wow. Then Daniel laughed again. <laughs> Daniel laughed and held the king that he should not go in and said, Behold now the pavement, and mark well whose footsteps these are. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. Then the king was angry and took the priests with their wives and children, and showed that, sh who showed him the secret doors where they came in and consumed the things that were, that were on the table. Therefore the king killed them and delivered Baal into Daniel's power, who overthrew it and its temple. In that same place, there was a great dragon in which the people of Babylon worshipped. The king said to Daniel, Will you say that this is of brass? Behold, he lives, eats, and drinks. You can't say that he is no living God. Therefore, worship him. Then Daniel said, I will worship the Lord my God, for he is the living God. But allow me, O king, and I will kill this dragon with, without sword or staff. The king said, I allow you. Good choice, king. Then Daniel took pitch, fat, and hair and melted them together and made lumps of them. He put these in the dragon's mouth, so the dragon ate and burst apart. Daniel said, Behold, these are the gods you all worship. When the people of Babylon heard that, they took, a gr they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, The king has become a Jew. He has pulled down Baal, slain the dragon, and put the priest to the sword. So they came to the king and said, Deliver Daniel to us, or else we will destroy you and your house. Now when the king saw that they, had, that they trapped him, being constrained, the king delivered Daniel to them. They cast him into the lion's den, where he was six days. There were seven lions in the den, they, and, and they had been given them two carcasses and two sheep every day which then were not given to them, intending that they would devour Daniel. Now there was in Jewry the prophet Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk um, Greek, Ambakom, Ambakom, who had made stew and had broken bread into a bowl. He was going into the field to bring it to the reapers. But the angel of the Lord said to Habakkuk, Go carry the dinner that you, that you have 
into Babylon to Daniel in the lion's den. Habakkuk said, Lord, I never, saw, I never saw Babylon. I don't know where the den is. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and lifted him up by the hair of his head and with the blast of his breath set him in Babylon over the den. Habakkuk cried, saying, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which God has sent you. Daniel said, You have remembered me, O God. You haven't forsaken those who love you. So Daniel arose and ate, and the angel of God set Habakkuk in, in place again immediately. On the seventh day, the king came to mourn for Daniel. When he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. And the king cried with a loud voice, saying, Great are you, O Lord, you God of Daniel, and there is none other beside you. So he drew him out and cast those who were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. Hmm. Amazing, 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 amazing. Yes, Alan says, uh, Bell and the Dragon is awesome. Yeah, it is. Awesome. That's awesome story for sure. Awesome. Corey says, hello, everyone. Hello, Corey. Welcome. All right, let's do this. Ezra uh, chapters one through three. Remember in chronolo chronological order, Ezra is actually just, it should come just right after Daniel. So as we are reading chronological here, chronologically, I should say. All right, so Ezra chapter one. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that Yahweh's word by Jeremiah's mouth might be accomplished, Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and, and put it also in writing saying, Cyrus, king of Persia says, Yahweh, the God of heaven, has given me all kingdoms of, this, of the earth and he has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there, whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of Yahweh, the God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. Whoever is left in any place where he lives, let the men of his place help him with silver, with gold, with goods, and with animals, in addition to the free will offering for God's house, which is in Jerusalem. Then the heads of father's households of Judah and Benjamin, the priests and the Levites, all whose spirit God had stirred, up to, stirred to go up, rose up to build Yahweh's house, which is in Jerusalem. All those who were around them, who, excuse me, all those who were around them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver and uh, with gold, with goods, with animals, and with precious things, in addition to all that was willingly offered. Also, Cyrus the king brought out the vessel of his house, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought out of Jerusalem and had put in the house of his gods. Even those Cyrus king of Persia brought out by the hand of Mith Mithridath, Mithridath, excuse me, the treasurer, and counted them out to Sheshbazar, the uh, prince of Judah. This is the number of them, 30 platters of gold, 1,000 platters of silver, 29 knives, 30 bowls of gold, 410 silver bowls of a second kind, and 1,000 other vessels. All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400 Shesh Sheshbazar, uh, brought all these up, when the captives were brought up from Babylon to Jerusalem. Chapter 2, Ezra chapter 2. Now these are the children of the province who went up out of the captivity of those who, were, uh, who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away to Babylon, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his city, who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Zariah, 
Reeliah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispar, Bigvai, Rehum, and Baana. The number of the men of the people of Israel, the children of Parosh, 2,172. The children of Shephatiah, 372. The children of Ara, 775. The children of Pahath Moab, of the children of Yeshua and Yoab, 2,812. The children of Elam, 1,254. The children of Zatu, 945. The children of Zakai, uh, 760. The children of Bani, 642. The children of Bebai, 623. The children of Osgod, 1,222. The children of Ad. Ad Adonikam, 666, quite the number there. The children of Bigvai, 2,056. The children of Adin, 454. The children of Ater, of Hezekiah, or in the Hebrew, that'd be Hezekiah, uh, 98. The children of Bezai, 323. The children of Yora, 112. The children of Hashum, 223. The children of Gibar, 95. The children of Bethlehem, 123. The, the men of Nafa and Natufa, 56. The men of Anathoth, 128. The children of Azmaveth, 42. The children of Kiriath Erim, uh, Kefira, and Beroth, 743, the children of Rama and Geba, 621, men of Mikmas, 122, men of Bethel and Ai, 223, children of Nabo, 52, children of Magbish, 156, children of the other of the other Elam, 1254, children of Harim. 320, children of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 725, children of Jericho, 345, children of Sa Sana'a, uh, 3,603, the priests, the children of Yediah, of the house of Yeshua, 973, the children of Emer, 1,052. Children of Pashur, 1,247. Children of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the children of Yeshua and Kad Kadmiel. Of the children of Hadi, ha excuse me, Hodi, Hodavi, 74. The singers, the children of Asaf, 128. The children of the gatekeepers, the children of Shalom. The children of Ater, the children of Tamon, the children of Akub, the children of Hat Hat Hatita, the children of Shobai, in all 139. The temple servants, the children of Ziha, the children of Hashab Hashaf. Uh, <laughs> some of these names are tongue twisters. Ha Hasufa, the children of Taboth, Taboth. The children of Keros, the children of Siaha, the children of Padon, the children of Lebana, the children of Hagabah, the children of Akub, the children of Hag Hagab, the children of Shamlai, the children of Hanan, the children of Gidel, the children of Gahar, the children of Ray, 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 excuse me, Raya. Reya, the children of Razin, the children of Nakoda, the children of Gazam, the children of Uza, the children of Pasea, the children of Besai, the children of Asna, the children of Meonim, the children of Nephesim, the children of Bakbuk, the children of Hakufa, the children of Hahur, the children of Basluth, the children of Mahida, the children of Harsha, the children of Bar Kos, the children of Sisera, the children of Tema, the children of Naz Nazia, the children of Hatipa, the children of Solomon's, 
the children of Sotai, the children of Hasafereth, the children of Paruda, the children of Yala, the children of Darkon, the children of Gedel, the children of Shephatiah, the children of Hatil, the children of Pokereth Hazabayim, the children of Ami, all the temple servants, and the children of Solomon's servants were 392. These were those who went up from Teel, Teel Mela, Teel Harsha, Kerub, Adan, and Imar. But they could not show their father's houses and their offspring, whether they were of Israel. The children of Deliah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nakoda, 652. The children of the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Hak. Hakoz, the children of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite, and was called after their name. These sought their place among those who were registered by, by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore, they were deemed disqualified and removed from the priesthood. The governor told them that they should not eat of the most holy things until a priest stood up to serve with Urim and with Thummim. The whole assembly together was 42,360 in addition to their male servants and their female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 200 singing men and singing women. Their horses were 736, their mules 245, their camels 439, their 6,720. Some of the heads of father's households, when they came to Yahweh's house, which is in Jerusalem, offered willingly for God's house to set it up as in its place. They gave according to their ability into the treasury of the work 61,000 derricks of gold. In the footnotes, um, a derrick was a gold coin issued by a Persian king weighing about 8.4 grams or about 0.27 troy ounces each. Uh, 61,000 is quite a lot. 55,000 minas of silver. A mina is about 600 grams or 1.3 US pounds. So 5,000 minas is, is about three metric tons. <laughs> That's a lot. And, and 100 priest garments. So the priests and the Levites, with some of the people, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants, lived in their cities, in all Israel in their cities. Ezra chapter 3. When the seventh month had come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Yeshua, the son of Yazadok, uh, stood up with his brothers and uh, the priests and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his relatives, and built the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. In their fear, because of the peoples of the surrounding lands, they set the altar on its base, and they offered burnt offerings on it to Yahweh, even burnt offerings morning and evening. They kept the Feast of Booths, so that would be the Feast of Sukkot, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the ordinance, as the duty of every day, re of every day required. And afterward, the continual burnt offering, the offerings of the new moons, of all the set feasts of Yahweh that were consecrated, and everyone who willingly offered a free will offering to Yahweh. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to Yahweh, but the foundation of Yahweh's temple was not yet laid. They also gave money to the masons and to the carpenters. They also gave food, drink, and oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea, to Yopa, according to the grant that they had from Cyrus, Persia. Now in the second year of their coming, 
to God's house at Jerusalem in the second month, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, Yeshua, the son of Yosadak, and the rest of the brothers, the priests, and the Levites, and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem began the work and the appointed Levites from the 20 from years old and upward to have oversight of the work of Yahweh's house. Then Yeshua stood with his sons and brothers, Kadmiel with his sons, the sons of Judah, together to have the oversight of the workmen in God's house, the sons of uh, Hanadad with their sons and their brothers, the Levites. When the builders laid the foundation of Yahweh's temple, they set the priests in with trumpets, with the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise Yahweh according to the directions of David, king of Israel. They sang to one another in praising and giving thanks to Yahweh. For he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever toward Israel. All the people shouted with a great shout when they praised Yahweh because the foundation of Yahweh's house had laid. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of, of fathers' households, the old men who had seen the first house when, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice. Many also shouted, with, shouted for joy so that the people could not discern the voice of the shout of joy from the noise of weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard far away. Far away. All right, so that concludes our reading for today, a little bit earlier than usual. Let's see what we have here in the live chat. Psalm 94 says, Wow, two great stories. Yes, they are very... They are very good stories. Corey says, when I hear Baal and the dragon, it makes me think Baal was a dragon slayer or somehow to train your dragon, but in a novel. <laughs> okay, yeah. All these descendants, yes. That's good. Vinny says, good to know I'm not the only one who struggles with the pronunciation of names in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yes, Corey says, uh, Masons in the Bible for those who have different thoughts is just referring to stone cutters. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out, Corey. Um and Tammy says, 11 in the chat, hit the like button. Yes, please do. Please do hit the like button. Thank you very much, Tammy, once again. Okay, yeah, it's an early night tonight. Um, so tomorrow uh, we are going to finish up Ezra and Haggai, okay? We're going to finish up Ezra and Haggai. In the next few days after that would be Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, and then the book of Esther. Okay, so I'll be reading the Hebrew Esther. And um, on Saturday, we have Onia coming back with us. And um, excuse me, he's going to be presenting his version of the book of Esther, uh, comparing all of the different manuscripts Um and I'm looking forward to that. So that's a little bit of the outlook for the week. It may change. Um, it's subject to change. Depends on what happens in the near future. Um, I am gearing up for the next, uh, as as I hinted there, um, I am gearing up for the next uh, several weeks to have uh, some very interesting guests come on. A lot of um, invitations are out. Just waiting to hear back. Lord willing. Alan says, thank you, brother. Much love and blessings to you all. Thank you again, Alan. And once again, Alan, love and blessings multiplied back to you as well. B 
Billy asks a question, why does Baal keep coming up in Scripture? Who is he? Is that a very, very good question, uh, Billy? And this is, uh, uh, Baal is actually, it means, um, it's, it's, it's a name or, uh, you couldn't even say a title, but it, it actually mean, literally means Lord. Um, and uh, I, I believe it is the, like, a, like the false, a false god. Um, now to get into all the detail of exactly, um, how it, when it came in and how it came in and, and all that detail is, is, uh, is, uh, of course is very, very, um, involved, but, um, yes, um, there are different beliefs as well. As I always do, I always pre present different other beliefs. There are beliefs that, uh, Baal is actually, um, almost like, not not the golden calf, but almost like the golden calf, like as if it's it's it, it's presenting itself as being God, but it's not. Like how Aaron says, uh, "Behold, this is your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt." It's, you know, re basically referring to the golden calf. Um, but uh, yes, some people believe that uh, we shouldn't call anybody Lord because of the word Baal. Me Baal means Lord. I wouldn't go that far um, just because, I mean, even in the scriptures we got, um, uh, I need to be careful what I say here. I know there's a lot of people that hold me very, and it's good too. I mean, I uh, I appreciate people holding me uh, accountable for every single thing, but we have... Um, Let me just pull up the scripture. I want to make sure. Okay. Just a second here. Um, so we do have, we do have passages like this. This is, uh, second Samuel chapter five, verse 20. Now, uh, so David went to Baal Perazim. Now this is a place actually. Uh, and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken th through my enemies before me, like a breakthrough of water. Therefore he called the name of the place Baal Perazim. So David here, you see indirectly connected this word Baal with something that the Lord has actually did. Like the Lord broke through um, his enemies, like a breakthrough of water. And he calls it Baal Perazim, which means Lord of the breakthrough. Okay. Uh, so very interesting. So, I mean, it's, and, and we have a, um, another, ref again, referring to that same event, in First Corinthians, no, Corinthians, excuse me, First Chronicles fourteen eleven. Uh, so they went up to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. Then David said, "God has broken through my enemies by my hand, by my hand like a breakthrough of water." Therefore, they called the name of that place Baal Perazim. My my only point is this: is that this word Baal is not that taboo. Uh, seeing that even David himself used it referring to the Lord, the Lord of the breakthrough, basically. Um, however, of course, we know that the Baal that's spoken of in Scripture and what we just read earlier, Baal or Baal, of course, that's a false god. Uh, and that's, you know, so um, it, that does that does deserve its own study, definitely. It's, it is a, a very interesting passage. Speaking of um, studying Baal, I know Onia, uh, I remember Onia has a lot to say about Baal as well in that regard. So, yeah, Alan says Baal was a pagan god. Yes. Vinny says, thank you, Christopher. Many blessings to everyone. Shalom. Thank you very much, Vinny. As always, blessings multiplied back to you and yours.
This is interesting. Alan, when I was stationed in Ulm, Ger Germany, they had a brewery called Golden Aschen, Asch Asch Gold, Gold Cow. That's interesting. Corey says, I have a question for you, good sir. Uh, most likely a test. How did the mixed multitude of different languages start within, within the Old Testament? And can you remember the event that happened? How did the mixed multitude of different languages start within the Old Testament? Um, could you like give me uh, a little bit more when you say mixed multitude, I'm thinking about, you know, the Exodus, but I, it doesn't sound like you're talking about that when you say mixed multitude of different languages. So we have like in Genesis, I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about or not, but please, if you could, if you could please clarify in Genesis chapter 10, it does talk about basically different languages that existed. Um, um, yeah, Corey says, uh, mixed multitude, I mean different languages within the masses. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so in Genesis chapter 10, this is actually even like if you, I, <laughs> I know we're kind of getting into another huge topic here, um, but Genesis chapter 10, if you want to read it chronologically, I mean, if, if you want to say that Genesis chapter 10 happened before Genesis chapter 11, well, we have different languages in Genesis chapter 10 before Genesis chapter 11, before, before Babel. It depends on how you want to read it. Just saying, just saying. Genesis 10. If that chronologically is before Genesis 11, then we do have, for example, let me just let me just point it out. Genesis 10. Now this is the genealogies, the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magna. Okay, so we got all that, kind of, all that, yada yada yada. And then we have from the from these coastland peoples of the Gentiles were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language. So in other words, there was different languages uh, according to their families and in, in, into their nations, okay? Um, and we see this over and over again throughout Genesis chapter 10 here. Uh, let me just, uh, just for the sake of time. So we got it there in Genesis 10, 5. We also have it in Genesis 10, 20. These were the sons of Ham according to their families, according to their languages, Okay. Interesting. So different languages amongst even the sons of Ham himself. Um, again, even with Shem um, in verse 31. These are the sons of Shem according to their families, according to their languages. Okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. So that's it for that. So each one of the uh, sons of um, Noah had their own descendants and uh and it, it sounds like they each had their own language. It sounds like, or at least dialect. It, it, you'd have to really talk to, um, again, I hate to keep on putting putting it off on Onia, but I, I know Onia really spent a whole lot of time studying languages, especially the historical uh, roots of languages in, in alongside the biblical uh, um, studies as well. So. All I'm saying is um, we have references to different languages shortly after Noah. Shortly after Noah. So, excellent question, uh, Corey. Corey says, it is said in the event that everyone spoke the same language in building the Tower of Babel. Okay, this is this for sure I can refer you. I, I actually have two videos on this one video is a very old video actually well what was it be seven eight years old maybe it's an old video that i did it's called 
the original language, the original language and the Tower of Babel. It's an old video. It's actually a lengthy video. If I can remember, it's a couple hours. And I spend um, on that very topic alone. Was it one language? Was it many languages? Um, but I mean, I hate to get into all the detail, but uh, just refer to that video and you know, watch that video. And, it, and I apologize ahead of time. It's an old video and it may be a little bit long and drawn out, but it has a lot of good information there. I did a lot of uh, research and study and I packed it all into that video. And so uh, I would recommend that you watch that. Um, even if you put the speed on a higher speed, <laughs> you know, so check it out. Original, the Tower of Babel and the original, let me just make sure I get the, if you go to my channel and you search, just want to make sure I give you, I don't, I give you the proper information here. You search for original language. Yeah. Um, it's called the original language, the Tower of Babel and the Book of Enoch. Okay, so um, it's almost two hours long, and it's it was actually I thought it was it says here only four years ago. I thought it was more than that. So, yeah, sorry about that. But that's the that's the title of it. Um, let me just show you here, um, right here. It's the Tower of Babel in depth study, but the actual um, title is the original language, the Tower of Babel and the Book of Enoch. And so a lot of, uh, information is packed in there. Corey, I recommend that you listen to that. Corey says anything, uh, regarding history, I will listen to even if it's drawn out. Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you Lord willing tomorrow evening. And, uh, as always, I pray that Every one of you would uh, be blessed mightily by what we've read. To, we got in some really interesting stories tonight, didn't we? So uh, I pray that what we read and what, what we've discussed would be a great blessing to you and, uh, and uh, that God would use it to uh, further your relationship with him. All right. As always, you, got, you guys are awesome. You guys are world changers. I appreciate and love every one of you. So Corey says, God bless you, brother. Chris and everyone in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Okay. I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, I pray for every one of you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you wonderful, wonderful shalom peace. Amen, amen. See you tomorrow night.